guys. Welcome to the Band Gym. I want to take you through the benefits of attached band training versus attachment free training today and why you want to go ahead and consider attached training. Obviously, attached training is one of the main staples of resistance band training, but a lot of people don't go ahead and look at it as being that important. But I want to show you why you really want to consider attached training and why attached training might be for you a lot more beneficial than doing attachment free training. So let's go ahead and jump in and let's take three movement patterns. Let's take pushing, let's take pulling, and let's take squatting. Let's break each, all three of them down using attached versus attachment free, and I'll show you the benefits of doing the attached version versus over the attachment free version. So let's go ahead and jump in. So first of all, let's look at pushing, okay? So if I go ahead and I go attachment free pushing, Obviously what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the band and go behind my back. Now, you've seen me go ahead where I use the hook over, the loop over system where I loop it over my thumbs and I'm going to go ahead and do one arm pushing. Now, very convenient, no question about it. And you can drop into a kneeling position, set this hand deeper so you get resistance through the full range of motion. You could also go ahead and drop in squatting. You're very versatile in this position when it comes to pushing. However, you're gonna see that the band is wrapped around my shoulder blades. So when I go to push, I get the concentric movement like always, but when I do the eccentric component of it, there's nothing going ahead and pulling me backwards. All right, now let's go to attached training. So I got my band set up over here for attached training. Now with pushing, I'm gonna come out here, same thing. Now granted, not as convenient. No question about it, you gotta have attachment point. But when I go to push, my trunk immediately has to engage because there's a horizontal force that is pulling me back. So now, as I go ahead and push, not only am I working my chest and my anterior shoulder, but my trunk is having to work a lot with stabilization. You're also gonna feel that lower foot, especially that back foot, going ahead and digging in. So now you've got stabilization occurring from the floor all the way up. That's a huge benefit when you start compare, uh, associating that with walking or weight bearing or controlling ourselves with balance and stability. There's a lot of key benefits to that. And I think that's one of the big reasons I enjoy horizontal attached pushing more so than just attachment free pushing. Now let's go to pulling. So I've got my band set up over here and I've got it linked up. So let's go into pulling now, same thing. Let's hook it on and let's go attached pulling. So if I go attached pulling and I pull and I set myself up here, immediately as soon as you put yourself in this position, you're gonna notice this front leg has to work on stability. So it's gotta stabilize, so it's gotta drive into the floor as you go to pull. So now pulling becomes a ground up exercise, which once again is key to your ability to go ahead and improve your walking balance and coordination your walking stability, and being able to just be stronger on your feet. Even if you go to a squatting position, you can go ahead and engage your hips very aggressively with horizontal attached pulling. Hip extension is obviously one of the key movements that we need to be strong at throughout life to be able to do so many different things. Now, let's take that same movement and let's go ahead and look at it from an attachment-free standpoint. Well, the most common way to go ahead and do a single arm pull would be to wrap it around my foot, hook my hand through the loop, and now I'm gonna do a single arm pull. Now immediately, as soon as you do this, there's gonna be less force through this foot as I go to pull. So that means there's less ground contact forces being driven, therefore my glutes don't have to work as aggressively, and therefore my trunk and the whole system is not gonna go ahead and be engaged as aggressively as it was with attached training. So once again, with attached training, not only are you training the muscle, muscles that you're trying to work, in this case, the mid back, but you're also getting some great weight bearing stabilization through that glute and through that lower body, which is key to a lot of functional activities that you wanna do. So now, let's take squatting. And let's stay with this same single arm or single leg versions. So one of the most popular attachment free squatting exercises is obviously split squats where we're gonna go ahead and go up here and rack it, put my foot out in front and immediately 
I'm just gonna go ahead and do my split squat. I've got a great vertical load, so as I go down, I'm driving up through, and it's gonna be very similar to going ahead and lifting a free weight. Now let's take it and let's hook ourselves up into here and let's do a split squat in an attached situation. What's the difference? Well, first and foremost, the same thing. My foot is driving into the ground, but now as I go into my split squat, I am having to work on handling what we call shear force. And shear force is our ability, as our foot comes into the ground, it doesn't come straight down, but it comes down and into the ground, which means that we've gotta go ahead and teach our body how to control that. That's shear force, which is a combination of vertical force and horizontal forces, which is what essentially your foot is dealing with on every single step that you take. So by placing my foot in this position and doing attached split squats, my body is immediately gonna go ahead now and have to learn how to deal with shear force. And what's that gonna do for your body? It's gonna immediately engage your glute medius so that now as you're doing your split squats, uh, you're immediately getting more glute medius activation. Why is that important? The glute, media, glute medius is the number one stabilizer of your body when you're walking so that you don't tip side to side. So as I take that step forward on my right foot, my glute medius is what's preventing my knee from going side to side, my ankle from losing its control, and my hip from turning in and out. Really important when you start looking at injuries because that frontal plane control or lack thereof is what leads to a lot of knee issues like tendonitis on the inside of your knee or IT band tendonitis, medial meniscus irritation, serious, more serious MCL strains and ACL tears. So that frontal plane stability is what really helps us stabilize. Now the other thing that's important is it's the shear forces that over time start to wear our joints out. So now in this attached split squat setting, you are teaching your body how to activate the key muscles that help control shear that in turn are gonna take pressures off your joint. So lastly, if you are a person that does not do well with squatting, you very well may find that if you do attached split squats or even attached squats, that you are able to go ahead and do them easier than you would if you went ahead and used an attachment free setting or obviously with free weights. So there you go guys. Why do you want to do attached training? There's just so many more benefits to attached training that really incorporate and synergize with what we want to be able to do on a daily basis in our regular lives and things that we want to enjoy like walking, like being active in a bike as a biker, being active as some type of recreational athlete in tennis or golf. All of these things are going to be improved with attached band training. Give it a try and see if you see what I see. But I think you're gonna find that if you start doing more attached band training, you're gonna go ahead and find that you are better on your feet. Have a great day, guys.